This is a video of me building this bench press and squat rack. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a small workout area in my shop and you can see that it's set up right now is less than optimal. So I decided to make a bench press and squat rack to make things a little bit more useful. My Harbor Freight horizontal bandsaw decided to stop working. So for now I'm using a brace of cutoff saw. I'll drill a 13 16 hole so that I can put a three quarter inch bolt all along this bar and that'll, that'll, that'll allow the bracket that holds the uh, weightlifting bar to uh, move up, up and down. I'm gonna drill a bunch of 13 16 holes. It doesn't need to be super accurate. So I'm just making sure that the distance between the channel and the end mill are the same on both ends of the channel. And high adjustments to make sure things are level are using this uh, machinist jack. You gotta make sure everything's rigid. So I'm using this uh, strap clamp system to clamp the piece of channel iron down to the table. Now I'm using the edge finder to find the edge of the channel. As soon as you see it kick over, you know you're on the edge of the workpiece. So I use the edge finder to find the edge of the tubing. The edge finder is two hundredths, two hundredths of an inch in circumference. So I moved it over a hundred towards the channel, and now I know that would be the center of the center. That would be the center of the edge finder. And so now I'm at the edge of the tubing, and now I'm going to move it one inch. So then it'll be dead center inside the tubing. Each spin of the crank is 200 of an inch, so five full turns would be one inch. Now I'm checking up a center drill. And you can see we are dead center of the channel. There's more accurate ways to do this, but for what, for what I'm building, this is perfectly fine. I measure two inches down from the end, and that'll give me a reference line to start the hole, and then I'll just do two inches increments all the way down the tubing. Since a drill bit can have a tendency to wander, a center drill ensures that it starts in the right spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So now let's just repeat the steps a bunch of times. Move it over two inches, do a center drill, move it over another two inches, do another center drill, and keep going until you get to the end. Now I'm using a random size medium bit to drill a pilot hole. And doing the same step, just going the other direction. Crank a bunch of times, drill, crank a bunch of times, drill, repeat, repeat, repeat. These are my apprentice markings because I keep forgetting which direction the crank has to turn to move the table the right direction. And now one more time through with the 13 16 drill bit. This mill is pretty new to me. I know I've got the drill bit spinning way too fast. Um, right after I finished this project, finally got the back gears working so that I can turn things a lot slower. Now I've started working on the brackets that move up and down that hold the weight bar. This will eventually be another 13 16 hole for the pin to go through. The plan is for this bracket to slide up and down outside of the tubing that I drilled all the holes in. For this to work, I need to get rid of the weld seam that's inside of the tubing. I'm using a Harbor Freight Special Extended Reach Die Grinder. For 30 bucks, it's pretty hard to beat. I'm going to slip a piece of three-quarter pipe through this hole and weld it on to hang some weights on. Machinists around the world are probably cringing at me using a hole saw. I'm welding a 2.5 inch extension tubing to the 2 inch drill tubing 
because I made this out of scrap and uh, I didn't have a long enough piece of 2 inch tubing. Couple tacks, a little wire wheel, and then I'll weld it up. This whole project is done with a stick welder, only because my MIG welder has a bad circuit board. This whole project would have been a lot easier with a MIG welder. But sometimes you gotta roll with what you got. These pieces are the base of the weight rack and I'm gonna put some leveling feet on it just in case my shop floor is not perfectly level. Another Harbor Freight Special. I've got a set of standard taps. Pretty big set um, for $80, it's a really good deal. These leveling feet are a little bit overkill, but I had them uh, laying around in a spare parts bin, so why not use them? I'm about to weld the legs onto the vertical tubing, and this Fireball Tools Mega Clamp is pretty convenient to use. You'll see a lot of this red tubing in, in the project. A couple of years, somebody was getting rid of it and I got it for basically free, so I use it in a lot of different projects. Now I'm welding on one of the pipes that will hold the unused weights. I would say that these are pretty decent welds for somebody who has only learned how to weld by watching YouTube videos. Now I'm working on the bracket that moves up and down in the vertical section. And this is a tab that'll keep the bar from rolling off and hurting whoever's using the rack. about to do final assembly. I'm doing everything on a couple saw horses. It's definitely not optimal, but it is possible to do good work on a couple saw horses. Someday I'm gonna get me a, a real welding table. This is the top horizontal piece, and it connects the two vertical sides. Other than two tractor hitch pins that I bought for the adjustable sections, this was pretty much free. I'm welding up the other side of the horizontal piece because I didn't feel like doing an overhead weld. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.